I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words. Today, Memorial Day, is a tough one for a lot of us. I'm the son, grandson, and brother of combat veterans and a former Navy pilot myself. So today has special significance. But I often struggle with how to acknowledge it. Is wishing someone a happy Memorial Day appropriate? Every year, I read angry articles and Facebook posts about how awful that phrase is, that nothing about today is happy. I get it. This is a moment to honor those who died serving in our military. Memorial Day is among our oldest holidays, conceived in the aftermath of the Civil War. But for many Americans, it has become little more than a three-day weekend filled with backyard barbecues and doorbuster sales. For those who see this day of remembrance being trivialized, it is easy to take offense at the suggestion that there is anything happy about it. That said, I don't recall my father or grandfather giving much thought to how they greeted their neighbors at our own backyard picnics. It was always Happy Memorial Day. Perhaps that is because prior generations didn't need reminders about what the holiday signified. My grandfather's war, World War II, was a national effort in which everybody sacrificed something. My father's war, Vietnam, was deeply divisive, but at least everyone knew it was happening. The draft ensured a lot more families had skin in the game. Today is different. Fewer than 1% of Americans served in Iraq or Afghanistan. The vast majority of civilians don't know anyone who died there. The farther into our national memory these wars recede, the more important it is to maintain reminders of the price paid. I suspect that is the underlying reason behind removing the happy from Memorial Day. But however well-intentioned, I'm not sure this attitude does much to preserve the memory of those who died defending our way of life. In fact, I worry it does the opposite. I don't know many veterans who expect the country to mark this holiday with 24 hours of uninterrupted sadness. A few years ago, I spent Memorial Day in a military cemetery visiting my grandfather's grave. Though I was there to grieve, I couldn't help but recall stories that made me laugh, like when his plane's emergency raft deployed in flight and his machine gunner nearly shot off the tail trying to deflate it. Smiling at that memory, I realized I was not alone. All around me was the sound of quiet laughter as families gathered around simple white headstones to remember their lost loved ones. These days, when I reminisce with my buddies about friends who did not come home, the stories we most often tell are the ones that bring us joy. That is how they would want it. When I think about those who have died serving in the military, I remember why they joined in the first place. They did it to defend a way of life, one that includes the pursuit of happiness as a founding ideal. To be sure, we could use more reverence on this day, a moment of silence before we dig into our hot dogs, maybe fewer shopping sprees but unrelenting grief? None of my buddies would want that. Mattress discounts and pie-eating contests and the freedom to be happy are all part of what they fought for. This Memorial Day, I will head to the lake as the sun is coming up. I will spend some time alone and think about those who never made it back. Then I will return to my wife and kids and be grateful for my life. I will fire up the grill and invite friends over. And who knows, I might just wish them a happy Memorial Day, knowing full well that this day and the joy it brings are gifts I can never repay. Except, perhaps, by living a life full of happiness as my fallen friends would have wanted. This is Peter. And this is Tom. We want to tell you guys a little bit about our podcast. Tom and I met in college, became best friends, and then teachers almost 20 years ago. Sometimes school just does not allow us to elaborate on the topics that we find interesting, like the real shark attacks that inspired the movie Jaws, or the real historical context to Indiana Jones artifacts. Where does cereal come from? Or are zombies real? Does Ben Franklin really deserve to be on a $100 bill? On our podcast, just like in our class, there are no stupid questions. 
Just two friends having a lighthearted conversation about history, pop culture, and the context of current events. Listen to History Teachers Talking Podcast from Evergreen Network, anywhere you get your podcasts.